Very good evening. It's 8 o'clock. I'm Tony Ndoro live from Johannesburg and these are your top stories. If these shops are selling expired goods, why people are looting these expired goods and taking them into their homes? Government condemns the looting in Gauteng. Four people have died as foreign-owned shops were targeted. Tswane Mayor Solim Simanga escapes the chop. He labelled the attempts to oust him as cheap party politics. ShopRite introduces pairs that don't have value-added tax weighing down their price tag. The retailer says it's an attempt to ensure greater access to affordable basic hygiene products. Now, 27 people have been arrested in connection with looting in Gauteng. Four people were killed in violent standoffs between locals and foreign nationals in Soweto and Cajiso. Two of the people arrested face a charge of murder. Our reporter Malungelo Boy spoke to some foreign shop owners in Soweto who deny that they are selling expired and counterfeit foodstuffs. In almost every corner of White City, this is visible. Fixing of shops damaged when locals turned on foreign shopkeepers, accusing them of selling old and counterfeit goods. Nomu Sam Shungu has just returned from visiting her nephew in hospital who was injured in the clashes. He is fighting for his life. My nephew was uh, woke up by somebody. He was sleeping in his room. And then I think it was at 10 when they said that there is this situation about the uh, Pakistanis. Yeah, so they, they were supposed to go and, and, and get rid of them. And then now that's when he got shot. And how is he now in hospital? He is very bad because it, it seems as if they shot him at the back of his head. And then now the bullet is stuck somewhere in the mind or in the brain. Yes. So now uh, the doctors, they can't operate him because the head now is swollen. And as the head is swollen, it is sensitive for them to, to operate. So now they have called the, we are coming from Paraguanath Hospital now. They've called the family to decide on whether to switch off the machines. While this family is left with that decision, Less than a kilometer away, these Ethiopian nationals have sought refuge at the local police station. These are some of the goods they were able to save in the standoff. They are lying. They are trying to take advantage. They are lying. How can I sell something that expired? We have a health inspector. After three months, after three months, they come and they check our shop. They give the letter and where if they saw in the shelf an expired debt, they collect and they load okay, and so they go. Malungi Lupui, Soweto. Several spas or shops in Ekuruleni have meanwhile been closed following an operation led by Mayor Mzwandile Masina. Shops in Reicha Park, Primrose and Boxburg were raided. Some were found to be selling fake or expired goods to the public. Several shop owners were also detained for having the incorrect SARS and immigration documentation. Health inspectors worked alongside Ekuruleni Metro Police and immigration officials during the raids. Mayor Masina says authorities are acting proactively so that people don't take the law into their own hands. At the same time, Deputy President David Mabuza says has also weighed in on the matter. He says there should be no problem with foreign-owned spaza shops. That's as long as the shop owners have documents uh, proving they are living in the country legally and that they have trading licenses. Mabuza has also questioned the motives behind the lootings. Yesterday, there was a, an attack to foreign national shops. The gripe and the problem was that these shops are selling expired goods. And I asked myself, now if these shops are selling expired goods, why people are looting these expired goods and taking them into their homes? That means these goods are not expired. That is just a, a way of a, deceiving all of us to say the goods are expired, but they are looting. The essence is to loot. 
Right, shifting our focus to politics in Tswane now. And the ANC and the EFF say they'll continue their bid to give Mayor Solim Simanga the boot. And Simanga gets uh, to keep his job for now after two motions of no confidence uh, against him failed to take off today. The Red Beret's motion was disallowed for being incomplete and the ANC then abandoned its motion before it was tabled. And Simanga has labeled the attempts to oust him as cheap party politics. Liranzo Temba has more. Just an hour before the start of a council meeting set to remove him from office, Msimanga seemed unbothered and in good spirits. Today, if anything happens, history will judge us. Are you ready to let go of a mural chain if needs be? I don't think the mural chain is going anywhere. Well, it's disappeared a long time ago, but the mayor will still be Solim Simanga tomorrow morning. The two motions against Msimanga failed to materialize. The EFF's attempt to oust him crumbled after the party didn't put the urgency of the motion in writing. We stage out. We cannot be able to see when the wrong things are happening. If someone do the wrong things, what's the reason to sit? You have to seek the alternatives. And then our alternatives were speculated very well. We are going to approach the courts. The walkout dealt the ANC a heavy blow in the numbers game. The party hoped to vote with the Red Berets to oust Msimanga. We cannot live for the next three months or for the next 90 months with Msimanga still at the helm. These are just tactics. But in a surprise move, the ANC also dished its bid to get rid of Msimanga, citing solidarity with the EFF. Now we got intelligence immediately that the speaker was also going to do an avalanche with the with the snipers of the DA to dismiss and not allow democracy to thrive. Now it was futile for the ANC to sit there. Msimanga may have survived the day, but both the ANC and the EFF are certain that what transpired here must be dealt with by the courts. If they feel that the speaker um, in any way had erred, they are more than welcome to approach a court of law. And if the court is going to um, interpret it any other way, then uh, we'll take it from there. But as things stand right now, um, even our legal minds uh, have told us that uh, we have done everything that needs to be done. The parties are confident Msimanga won't be as lucky when they return here to table another motion against him. Leranzo Temba, Pretoria. The Constitutional Court has ordered the South African Social Development Agency and its former CEO to pay up. Sasa and Pearl Bengu will have to pay the legal costs for a 2018 court case on cash social grants. The case extended the CPS contract. Former Social Development Minister Batabile Hlamini was exempted in the order. But a decision on her personal liability for the broader social grants crisis still has to be made by the Constitutional Court. With regards to today's order, the court says it was Sasa which made the case urgent. This court concluded that the urgency relied on was self-created and the explanation furnished for the delay in approaching this court was not satisfactory. But the unsatisfactory explanation falls short of gross negligence or bad faith which would warrant a personal costs order. What remains for determination is whether Sasa and its CEO in an official capacity to pay costs of the application. Were it not for the fact that the refusal to extend the period of suspension would have severely prejudiced innocent grant recipients, the application could have been dismissed. Consequently, the applicants must bear the costs of the application. In other local news, government uh, contractors have begun repairing homes in Kanyamazane in Pumalanga. The action follows weeks of violent protests in the area. The houses were damaged in a severe hailstorm back in May. Minister of Corporate Governance Zuelim Kize visited Nelspray today. He's there to determine what intervention is needed in the municipality. All right, stay with us on E! News. U.S. President Donald Trump, well, he continues his attack on one of the most recognizable broadcasters in the world. That story is coming up. 
Now, the local market was a bloodbath as key stocks disappointed on the JSC. And Muteo, uh, what's coming up in business besides that little bit of bad news that I just gave them there? <laughs> well, we have that a story on MTN and also we'll chat about what the zero rated uh, pads will be, mean for ShopRite uh, consumers and what the pink tax is and what that means uh, for consumers as well. All of that under the, after the break. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Muteo, it's a bad day to be an MTN shareholder today. Uh, once again, it is a bad day to be an MTN shareholder. I mean, they were fined in Nigeria for not registering SIM cards as regulations yep. should apply in that particular country. They were billed about $1 billion for doing that. And this time around, the central bank in Nigeria saying MTN is again not following regulations. They took out money out of the country, some $8.1 billion or 149 billion rand out of the country using Stanbic, which is, of course, a subsidiary of Standard Bank. And they said they didn't go through all the right regulations needed. Now, the central bank asking back uh, for, for that money, uh, demanding that uh, MTN put that money back in the country. And of course, Nigeria needs it with the foreign exchange shortage in the country. Is MTN being targeted? I don't think they're quite being targeted, but it's, it's always this network that's not following regulations, especially with the satellite offices in the rest of Africa and some regions as well. They're not following ethical uh, conduct by the book, and they're always being found to paying all these fines. Of course, they're also denying this as well, saying they followed all the regulations, but it can't always be you when the smoke, uh, the S5, of course. Yep. What's going on in the, in the markets? Well, in terms of a story that came out, we saw that in, in terms of pink tax and uh, something that ShopRite is doing in, as term, in terms of a corporate company, they've come forward and said, look, uh, we're trying to play ball with government in terms of having those zero rated items. Mm -hmm. Earlier this month, uh, the committee on, uh, that's looking at the VAT uh, rated items said, you know, the pr uh, products like brown bread as, uh, as well as white bread, school uniforms and uh, sanitary pads should be zero rated yep. and ShopRite stepping up uh, to be the first and saying they have uh, pairs that are 10 Ren 99, which is well below uh, the market price. The normal market price we're looking at is about 18 Rand, and that's really uh, quite a great cost, about 20,000 uh, uh, for uh, a lifetime for sanitary pads. And but there has always been a debate on pink tax, which is you know discriminatory pricing yeah. on women for sanitary products uh, as compared to their uh, male counterparts. All right, how's the Rand doing today? Not so well. Like the Argentinian peso putting some pressure on the rand as well as the uh, Turkish lira. We saw the Oshe go down by more than 2%. Industrials also down as Naspers and ShopRite uh, went down today. Financials are uh, also in negative territory as the rand betted about. In terms of gold shares, they were also down today. Platinum also not impressing the market down by more than a half a percent. Resources ending the day with some marginal gains. As I said, they're the rand being hit by other emerging market currencies. And because we're in one basket, they're also being dragged down there at 14 rand 71 against the dollar at 17 rand 15 against the euro. And a shocking 19 rand 13 cents now against the pound. Commodity prices, well, gold down at $1,200 an ounce and platinum back to those 10-year uh, lows uh, down half a percent today with Brent crude up and the petrol price, of course, looming at $77.56 a barrel. Ouch. Thank you so much, Mateo. Not so good news. Not so good news. All right, let's uh, carry on. Let's take a look at some international news now. And uh, U.S. President Donald Trump is at it again. He's once again attacked CNN, saying its president, Jeff Zucker, should be fired. He took to Twitter to share his views. Now, Trump claims CNN's hatred and extreme bias towards him have made the media organization unable to function. He has uh, previously complained about CNN, saying that it is dishonest and focused on its own agenda. With that, let's bring you a recap of our top stories for tonight. Government condemns the looting in Gauteng, where four people have died as foreign-owned shops were targeted. Now, finally, Mexico has broken its own record for the longest sandwich for the 15th year in a row. The 70-meter torta sandwich was created by dozens of local food outlets lending a hand. That's it for me and the team. Have a fantastic Thursday evening. Good night.